All right. I'd like to start this uh, conversation with a quick question. What do you guys believe is the greatest limitation to achieving your dream, as the title of this is? A lot of times you hear time, you hear resources, you hear opportunity, but personally, I tend to think there's more of a fundamental failure in how we think about success. The first question you typically get asked when you meet somebody is, what do you do? You're always asked, what is it you do, not how do you do it, why do you do it, and how did you get there? And when we think about this, the greatest problem is not, what do you do? Growing up, you frequently hear that if you want to be a CEO, if you want to start a company, you're likely going to have to start at the bottom. The way you grow up and the way you get there is normally execution. Now, when you are young, if you try asking somebody, what do you think I should do? How do I achieve X goal? How do I achieve X dream? It's actually very frustrating if someone tells you it does not matter what you do. Because for you as a kid, you may be thinking, well, there is nothing I do today that can help me get successful, that I can grow into a career, that I can grow into a job. But when it all comes down to it, I think at the end of the day, the best quote I heard growing up was, if you want to be a floor sweeper, you have to be the best floor sweeper you can possibly be. And you have to do that day in and day out. So it comes back to three things. It's what you do, your mission, and how you do it. And there's a lot of conversations about why you do things and how you do them. And I'm here to today to talk more about execution and how you get there. So I remember in my early teenage years, I think the best quote I ever heard was up here on the screen. It opened my eyes and really made me think, okay, it doesn't actually matter what I do because odds are what I want to do maybe doesn't exist today. It's a quote from Steve Jobs, and the essence of it is that we tend to grow up and get told exactly how things are. We tend to think there's a certain path, there's a certain something that I need to do, that I need to grow into, the, a path that I need to follow. But that's not really the end goal. Your goal is not to find a career and grow into it. Your goal is to find your passion and how you grow into it. And the second you realize that everything you see, whether it's the chairs you're sitting in, the clothes you're wearing, was made up by somebody that's no smarter than you are, that's when you can start to realize, okay, I can actually drive change. And once you realize you can drive change, that's when the path to execution starts. And so to dive right in and to jump to the actual execution side and the steps that we've taken at our company and the steps that we've taken to get there, the first step that we like to think about is listen. That's not to me, don't listen to me, I don't really know what I'm talking about. Uh, again, I'm no smarter than any of you in this room, I'm just here to talk about personal experience. But listen to the market, listen to yourself, listen to your customers. The worst problem that entrepreneurs typically face, and I'm friends with hundreds of entrepreneurs, I've seen thousands go through the process over the past four or five years doing this myself, and the best ones that I've ever met are impeccable listeners. I have a friend who has a company that's worth a few billion dollars now. He started about eight years ago. It's a great startup. It's growing extremely quickly. And the most inspiring quote I ever heard from him, or the one that I thought resonated with me so well, was, we need to learn to listen to ourselves better and to embrace frustration. If every time that you had an experience that made you want to pull your hair out, something that was frustrating, you actually stopped and listened to yourself and said, what is this problem I'm facing right now? and took it back to first principles of thinking about why does this problem exist, why hasn't it changed, and what can I actually do to change that, we would all come to inspiring dreams and inspiring possibilities much faster. But we tend to not listen to ourselves, we tend to not listen to those around us, we tend to think, if I'm going to be successful, I have to have some crazy idea that changes the world. Well, that's not the case. For example, we're in the logistics and supply chain space, but in my background, I did not exactly have experience there. What I did have the ability to do is listen to people and meet hundreds and hundreds of people who face the problem that we solve today and constantly listen to, what do you guys think the best solution is? How would you get there? And when you start to listen, you start to obsess over a problem rather than a solution. If you start to think about how do I actually come up with an idea, you start to obsess over a solution. And that's where you can typically fail. If you just go after a problem and say, this is exactly what the market needs, this is exactly what I need to build, you don't know that that's what the market needs. That's what you believe the problem is. But getting out there and listening constantly to yourself, your customers, 
the people around you, is really the first step towards executing. The second step, and the one we would follow next, is a bias towards action. Now, entrepreneurs suffer from overambition. We tend to want to do everything and do it very quickly. And the hardest part is you can't achieve your end goal quickly. It takes time. You have to build things. We've all heard the quote, just do it. At our company, we're very biased against this quote. We think you should just start it, because they're very different things. To do something, for example, think about this speech. When I was thinking about how do I put this speech together, it was very daunting to say I have to make slides, I have to come up with a presentation, I have to come up with what I want to say. The hardest part was thinking about all the time and effort that had to go into that. But to say, OK, you know what, I'll just open a Google Doc and I'll start typing, and maybe I'll finish it tomorrow. That's the smallest first step you can take, and then you start to comp compound that into a larger scale success. So the second most frustrating piece of advice I ever heard was success compounds. Why is that frustrating? Because it's essentially saying to be successful, you have to have success, and that grows into more success. And your first response will be, OK, well, I still have to get successful in the first place. But if you think about each step you take forward as a small success, and you improve constantly small piece by small piece, over time, that changes into a large outcome, or that compounds into a very large outcome. And so whenever I meet an entrepreneur or at our company, we think of a big idea of what we need to change. We always try to tailor that back into the smallest action our team can take today to actually start getting towards that goal. The next step we look at is iteration. Back to listening. It's very easy to obsess over a solution. And once you actually go to market, once you start thinking about, here's the problem I'm trying to face, here's my dream, here's what I want to build, the next biggest piece becomes iteration. You need to obsess over a problem, not a solution, and that problem is changing. The market's changing. Your customers are changing. Really, everything around your company or around your dream is going to change over time. And so the biggest thing you have to think about, typically, is how do I iterate? How do I be responsive and reactive and actually listen to what is in the market, what I'm being told, and respond to that? There's a famous example of how Kodak, for example, wasn't able to uh, output a digital camera because they were too worried that it was going to put their chemicals business out of business. Instead, they didn't release a digital camera, and it put the majority of their business out of business because they weren't willing to iterate. They weren't willing to listen to the market and actually follow what their customers wanted or what was changing. They were obsessed over a solution rather than the problem in the market they were trying to solve. So the next step that we always look at is consistency. When you go back to achieving a long-term goal, achieving a long-term success, making a dramatic change over time, and you think about the small steps, it's very easy to falter along the way. It's very easy to look back and say, there are times when you're going to want to stop. There's times when you're going to want to quit. There's times when you're going to say, I could be more successful if I just went in a completely different direction. Instead of trying to chase this dream, if I just went and worked at X company, I would make more money faster. We've all had those times. Every entrepreneur I've ever met has had those times. And consistency is the most uh, largest reason that's going to keep you in the game at the end of the day. If you actually have a passion for the problem you're solving and you believe there's a market for what you're doing, you have to be consistent. You have to show up at your office every day. You have to work every day. You have to keep on building, keep on taking small steps. Even if you take steps back, you have to take small steps forward. And so when you're struggling, when you hit a problem, you typically think the same thing as starting. You typically think, this is a massive solution. This is something that's going to take a lot of time to get over. But the best piece of advice I've heard and that we try to boil down every single day is when you actually hit a problem, it's how quickly can you move to oh well and find a solution. It's not obsessing over that problem. It's not thinking, why did this happen to me? Why us? It's thinking, oh well. How do I move on? How do I solve this? And how do I get to the next step? So the next step after consistency tends to be scale. This is the hardest problem for a founder. As a business owner, you tend to want to do everything yourself. You tend to think you're the best at everything in the company. You need to focus. You need to micromanage is what constantly happens every day. But if you really want to scale, if you want to keep building, you have to be selfish, not, with your, not only with your time, but with your resources. You have to be lazy. You have to say, I don't want to do everything. The best leaders I know are very lazy at the end of the day. 
You want to delegate everything to people smarter than you. Because you constantly have to say, I'm not the best to solve this problem in the company. I'm not the best to be a data scientist. I'm not the best salesperson. I'm not the best engineer. I need to find someone who's better than that at me and empower them to do that. And I need to constantly be replacing myself in every way I can. And that's the only way I'm going to scale. That's the only way we're going to be able to achieve this long-term goal and keep making steps forward. So you ultimately have to be very selfish with your time. And you have to find people constantly better than you. You have to look for, what are my unique strengths? What's my competitive advantage as a person that I can focus on? And anything that's not that, anything that doesn't differentiate me and helps our company be successful, something that only I can do, let me find someone who's way better at that than me. So the next step tends to be patience. Like I said, entrepreneurs are overambitious. We think of massive problems, multi-billion dollar markets, and we say, I think we can do that in this amount of time. I think we can do that tomorrow. I think we can do that in a year. But it tends to take a long time to truly drive change. One of the best founders I know, in the, or just in general, the best leaders, think in extremely long periods of time that sound daunting and sound irrelevant. There's companies that think in 100 or 300 year terms. And you may be saying, why does that matter? How can anybody predict what's 300 years from now? But it's really building for the long term. You're not trying to solve a small problem. You're not trying to solve something today. If you truly have a dream or you have a passion, you have to think about how does this change over time? What is the long term? How do I be less selfish or less focused on today and biased towards something that actually sets us up for 100 years, 300 years, really long term success, far after you're going to be involved at all? And so at the end of the day, we tend to ask, what is the biggest barrier to success, to achieving my dreams? And I'm here to argue that it's not about what you do. Again, people are going to be, especially when growing up, very frustrated when you say, it doesn't matter what you do. If someone's looking for success and you say, it doesn't matter, focus on what you care about, your passions and how you do it, it's stressful. But at the end of the day, if we teach people more about execution, more about finding a passion, more about iterating on problems, more about finding solutions and really executing on them and finding both the how and the why you do it, I personally believe that's where we're going to have more people achieving their dreams and achieving success. Thank you.